neither a deficit nor a surplus estimate the equilibrium interest. Um, first glance, this appears to be that standard sort of set them equal yeah. to each other. The national savings we saw this last time is private plus the public. Mm -hmm. And the uh, same thing for, uh, I guess, this I as well. It's this, it's the same, or they're calling it, they're calling it that I, um, private plus the public here. Um, yeah. Does not represent or surplus. Okay. Yeah. So it's just the standard here, set them equal to each other. I mean, there's only, only so many things you can do with, with two functions. In this case, uh, you set them equal and uh, solve for R. Now, the, the, the nice thing here is that the, the instructor is actually specifying that savings of the public is, is zero. I guess that comes from the deficit, not being a deficit nor a surplus. Yeah. Uh, not in that regard. So solving for, uh, for R here, I'm gonna add 200 to both sides, add 100 R to both sides. Yeah, 3,500 equals 350R, R equals 10%. Uh, All right, so then it says to actually, uh, so that's calculate the equilibrium interest rate. Uh, that, that's done. Calculate private savings. So savings private, savings private is, uh, Negative. I guess you could. Use, yeah, I guess you could use either either one since we set them equal. What were you gonna say? I'm sorry. Um. Yeah. Would you just plug in like negative two hundred plus two fifty times ten? Yeah. Yeah. The, but but you know, the question I have is like, well, wh which one would you choose, and why? And, and maybe it doesn't matter. I mean, I'm I I lean more towards I guess the the I, but um, but it doesn't really matter. Um, yeah. In this case, since yeah. they are equal, but but is. I guess they're saying that the priv, private here is is this one. So maybe that is the better one here. The minus 200 plus 250 times 10, and that's 2,300 there. All right, so that's the private savings. The national savings is equal to that. So I, I guess you, you would denote that they're the same. Mm -hmm. And and then it says investment in the total welfare of this market. So is there more to this question? Um, hmm. Let me look. Well. Hmm. So there appears to be a welfare equation. And what could it be? Um, so it's something times savings private. And let's see here. Yeah, I just don't know where some of these numbers come from. I, I could see where that one comes from. Uh, any anything in your notes there about welfare? Um, could it be the? Wait, no, I lost the. Um, oh. the like area between yes. intersections. Yes, because the so the, yeah, that makes sense here because it's the, the formula is the area of a triangle. Um, base times height. So the, what goes on? Got to get the right labeling for the axes here. Um, how are they doing that? Okay, so the uh, the the, the equation that's thirty three hundred minus one hundred r. Uh, it, it's uh, it hits. I don't want to do this. Um, this equals zero when r equals thirty three, and I guess rates along here is that. Does that seem right from what you mm -hmm. see in class? Yeah. Well, well, why do they have it on the other axis though? I don't get that. Okay. Oh, they must, I wonder if they resolve it. Sorry, the, the, the way they've graphed it is, is the 33 is up here, but mm -hmm. if, if R is the independent variable, which 
I don't know why it would be, but they're they're um where does the point eight come from? Wouldn't um the other one divided by that. Okay. There so the okay. Is that that's finding the height because when you take for the um private savings equation the intercept would be when um so the, that equation the, is equal to zero yeah the, the, but that's typically the the x-intercept down here like the way the way these equations are written if you think of r as x the the ver horizontal one here is when you're setting the, the function equal to zero. It's almost like they've switched the variables and then solved yeah. for it. I don't agree with, I don't really like the graph here. I mean, I know that, that that's why I was wondering why, but what they're doing in each of these is they're setting them each equal to zero, solving for R in, in both cases. And so in the first one, it's 3,300 minus 100 R equals zero, R equals 33. And the second one, solving for, for zero R equals, it ends up being 200 over 250 or 0 0.8. So that's, you know, it's down here. Now, I, I just don't, I don't, I don't see it, but, and then this intersection point is the 2300. So it's not the rate, it's yeah. on this axis, it's the, let's see, they, they do, the, they graph it, with S going up, so the instructor saying S is going up, and that's true. That's an increasing function there. Mm -hmm. um, and the other one's going down. Okay, I mean that that's that's true. Um, but if you right. put if you put zero in for R, you get you you get something different. Um, yeah, huh. I might I might ask I might ask. Um, about this one, maybe ask about the variables. I mean, we can we can calculate the area. Obviously, now it's it's not yeah. quite a big deal, but um, okay, that's interesting. Let's see here. We let me just do something real quick here. Uh, let's just say we we switch r equals thirty three hundred minus one hundred i, and then um, yeah. We solve for for that. So thirty three hundred. Okay. Um, so yeah. So it does work when you switch the variables. Um, you do get the right intercept. I don't know what to say because uh, I don't I don't I don't know why they graph it like this, but yeah. Um, huh. Nevertheless, so the, so the welfare is this area of this triangle. So if you get those, the base times height, one half base times height, um, 33 minus 0 0.8 times 2300. And there you have it. Yeah, yeah that makes um, enough sense. There's a review session tonight that I'm going to. Okay. Uh, so maybe they'll cover, cover that then. Yeah, I, I would certainly ask if uh, if there's an opportunity for that. Yeah. Okay. Assume now that the government runs a deficit of of two hundred dollars. Okay. So so what this does, if we go back to that initial equation, I equals savings private plus savings public. Uh, they're showing that as as minus two hundred being the savings public, and okay. then you. And and I'm and I'm sure it's because it's a deficit, yeah. some sort of mapping to that. But then it's the it's the same equations that we've been using in the previous part. Minus one hundred r equals minus two hundred plus two fifty r, and then you're solving solving for r again. Uh, so just just manipulates the numbers a little bit here. You end up getting r equals thirty seven hundred over. 350, which is 10.6, which is a little bit higher. And then 
they actually want you, so that's the equilibrium interest rate. They want you to get the new savings private. So you have to use that value of R just like you did in the previous part uh, in that equation. So 10.6 in there. You could similarly, uh, your, so your national savings is, because it, it, it does ask for that on investment. Um, you can get that now from from taking that number and subtracting the two hundred from it. Okay. Um, it the the solutions don't show that, but you can now you can see that they do uh, they do work work to that way. So the savings national two two four zero minus two hundred, and then the total welfare again. Um, so the 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 equations it changes a little bit um because if you go back this is again this where it's like like we we have to um this equation this the savings private equation mm -hmm. uh, or the right hand side now of this equation like it's going to drop this down because there's now another um minus 400 so let me try to make that clear here total welfare is um i don't want to do this so the, the the savings private plus the savings public side is the is the minus two hundred plus two fifty r minus the two hundred and you're saying this equal to zero and you end up getting that r equals four hundred over two fifty which is one point six and so that's what changes the graph so that now this is still at thirty three. This is now 1.6, and then this this intersection point is uh, the number we just found uh, the the 2240, not the less the 200. The right there. 1.6 that stays 30. Because we didn't we didn't mess we didn't modify the the other equation. Yeah, just the um, savings. Yes. Shifts in. Yeah. So, so total welfare is one half thirty three minus one point six times two thousand two hundred and forty, which ends up being higher than. Was it higher? Nope, not as high. Um, lower. Lower, yeah. So they they show this graph. I think probably the the graph. I mean, some you know these graphs in economics are. I think the so the, so the original ones. Uh, we had a uh, the original ones were here and here. Yeah. And this new one, because it because of that minus two hundred, it shifted it up, in this direction. So it was. It was that we had this point, and now it we have this is the twenty two forty value, and and you can see you know, point eight versus one point six and the thirty three, uh, and then that interest rate also moved from it was ten to ten point six. Yes. So the, 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 it goes on to sort of talk about whether this is, or what are the effects of this? Um, I guess that's part, well, I'm sorry, it says, what are the welfare effects of this policy? So we can say the welfare uh, decreased, total welfare decreased. I don't know what that means though, uh, in terms of like good or bad. Um, the deficit increase. So I guess you can start making this, miss this list here, the deficit, increased um the, it's the in, uh increase the interest rate went up uh investment went down uh private savings it says it went up um did it really go up it was twenty three hundred. 
I don't think it went up. I thought it stayed. Um, so you can make, I guess you can make all these lists, you know, of what happens. Yeah. Um, you know, total welfare uh, went, went down. So it 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 so the the you, you don't I guess you got to be careful not to go on and say that any one of these things are necessarily bad as the solutions say you just have to yeah say what did happen. Um. Okay. All right. So let's look at part C. Suppose that households believe that the greater government deficit today implies higher taxes in the future. What does this belief do to private savings and the supply of loanable funds? Does it increase or decrease the effects you discussed in part B? Okay, wait. Suppose that households believe that. What does this belief do to private savings and the supply of loanable funds? Um. It would, if people believed that higher taxes in the future, wouldn't they save more? It says that the, the savings will be pushed out to the right. Um, you know, presumably, this red curve would get pushed out to the right. Yeah. To um, kind of go back to where you were at, sort of, in some ways. I, I don't know. And I really don't know why. I mean, I guess that makes sense. I mean, government like, deficit, higher tax in the future. So like, people want to save more to. Uh, yeah, I suppose. Um, what does, so there, there's some, there's some relationship between savings and taxes. And I guess that's what I would want to ask. Like, what is that yeah. relationship? Among any others, you know, that, um, you know, supply of loanable funds. Like, how are these things all all related? Yeah. Well, the this will reduce. Or, or are they? Um, I mean, we in the in the in the text here it says the belief in higher tax in the future should increase private savings, moving national savings curve to the right. Okay. This will this will reduce the effect of increasing government deficits, um, but it, it should lower the interest rate also. If you if you believe that this curve, this red curve, gets pushed out to the right, you can then, see that the, yeah, the interest rate drops. Will drop, yeah, and but but that has some relationship to savings, the interest rate, I believe. Yes. So. This well, is outside. Okay, good. The wherever the interest rate is where it intersects. Yes. Okay. That's right. That's right. That's right. The interest rate, wherever it is. So push it out to the right. This this S yeah, S the and then drops. savings increases. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Okay, question seven. Question yeah. seven now. All right. All right. In the county of Orangeville, the demand for loanable funds and the supply for loanable funds is described as as follows. So the typical, you know, demand's going down, supply is going uh, to the right. Um, again, <laughs> I wonder about the graphs of these. I guess you don't have to do these, but I thought is. Is rate not on the x-axis? Interest rate, I believe, is on the y-axis. Okay, so that I mean that's really sort of bothersome here. I don't I don't understand because I mean you read I read these things like the y equals x, but anyway, you're just finding yeah. the you're finding the intersection of the two of them, and you're solving for r. So r ends up equaling ten, and then you that's the interest rate check. And then the equilibrium quantity is to put that back into either either one. So the equilibrium quantity Q is six times ten or sixty uh, in this example. 
Okay. Now this uh, uh, part B, so we should have, we actually should have done this one first. I think it's more straightforward. The total welfare is that triangle again. Um, yes. So based on, based on, you know, what we've, what we've been seeing here, you've got uh, supply, you got demand. And so the, the, um, the triangle here is based on those equations. So we got the, the 6R, the 80 minus 2R. So you can see it's, it's, uh, uh, so this one's zero. And this on the this, interest rate equations it's based or on the, oh, never mind, never mind. It's setting them each equal to zero to get those, yeah, to get those values. And then you need this number which is 60, it looks like. Yes. So you're finding the area of this triangle. I guess I would just straight up ask them to do like part B in an overview session and then maybe ask why, I don't know, just just why they're here or if you don't care, then just then just go with it, but. Yeah, well, um, I think it, because it's like, um, what, well, there's like another, graph where interest rate is on the y-axis and like quantity or I guess no it's like price and I don't know D I, don't don't let me confuse you you're the one taking the test I, I mean this is just a math me Matthew issue yeah. um, <laughs> so total welfare is is your base which is 40 minus zero times your height which is 60 all over two which is 1200 like that equals 1200 yes that makes sense um how does one ten... oh got it got it okay that yeah that's not bad <laughs> All right, part C here, it says uh, using this interest rate, so assuming that means the R equals 10, we just found in the previous problem, calculate the public savings, private savings, investment, and consumption of Orangeville given. Uh, so again, we, we've, we've seen this a few times. I is savings public plus savings private, or you can switch the order if you want. Um, so the, the I here is 500 minus 15 R, the savings private is the 100 plus 20 R. Sorry, let me switch the order of these. Savings private, savings public. And we can calculate the equation for savings public. Um, by... Or can we just put in Oh yeah, we'll yeah. just put in, yes. Yeah. Yeah. You just, you, you, you take an I and subtracting, subtracting S, so subtract 100, subtract 100, subtract 20R, subtract 20R. Or couldn't we figure out all these aspects just by plugging in yes. R? Yes. Um, like for 10? Yes. And for R? Yes, absolutely. So you said so two ways to do it. Um, 400 minus 35R equals savings public. And, and then you plug in the 10, or like you said, you can come down here and get 500 minus 15 times 10 it was 100 plus 20 times 10. And so that's 350 uh, equals 300 plus savings public. So and somehow you gotta get that savings public is 50. Yes. So okay. all right, uh, and then and then we private is three hundred and then S hub uh, is fifty. Got it. All right. Now uh we had this equation in a previous problem. The savix public is T minus G. Uh and the G in this problem is zero. They're telling you that G in this problem is zero right up here. Yes. Okay. So the, the savings public 
50 equals t minus zero, so therefore t must be must be 50. Got it. Savings private. This is an overarching equation. Y minus t minus c. Don't know where that comes from, but you probably do. Um, we have y. Y was given as 500. We now have t. Okay, so we have so savings. And I believe we have the savings private from an earlier part of this problem. Like yeah, if you savings put private is 300. 300, yeah. So we, we have three of the four. 300 equals 500 minus 50 minus C. C ends up being 150. Cool. A lot of a lot of equations here. Remember, I'm not sure how how to do that, but they're not very complicated. You know, they're not they're yeah. not a, they're not like monstrous things. Oh, this is why it's great. It's open note. Yeah. It's like, yeah. Look back and try to figure out things. Um, okay, I think that is both of those practice problems yes let me take a look i think there might be a few more um like sheets like these for i think one other topic perhaps that i can then send to you um let me just try to find that though exam two and Um, okay, yeah, there's one more um, financial markets. And so let me email this to you. And I'm just going to attach it to the same um, thread with the other questions. Okay, I just emailed that. I don't think I can hear you. All right, sorry about that. I just muted myself okay. briefly. No worries. You're, you're, you're thinking about getting a car and two offers are presented to you. One option is to buy the car for 40,000. Suppose you're planning to use the car for three years and selling at expected price of 20,000. The other, other alternative is lease the car for 8,000 paid at the end of every, every year. The relevant discount rate is 5%, which option is more uh, convenient? Okay, let's talk about the leasing one first, because I think that's the easier sort of mapping on this, yeah. believe it or not. Um, so there's a, there's the, the formula is, is um, based on the years that you have it. So you, you, you take the amount, it's basically a summation of the amount, which is typically negative because you're buying something yeah. over one plus the interest rate. I don't know if you have a formula like this, to the power of i, where i is the, the number uh, of years here. So um, it depends on how long you're in it. So in, so in your problem here, for the first year, and sometimes it's better to like look at it in buckets, for the first year, it's 1 plus 0 0.05 for that to the power of, of 1. Then you're and adding- 0 0.5 is coming from the discount rate? Th that's right. That's right. And then- the and these are like cash flows. I don't know if you've seen that yet. Um, maybe why would you do this? Is not that class yeah. one plus 0 0.05 squared. So that's for the second year. Yeah. Basically, uh, the, the, the idea here is that your, your money is you, you have to discount your money more the more out in the future you're going, um, because of 
and various things. One plus and points. So because are... it's um, for three years, you yes. do it. Yes. Yes. Okay. So that's, that's the leasing option. That's kind of the more standard one. Like these amounts could change, but they're making it really simpler. They're saying like, you're going to pay $8,000 each year. So it's negative. Um, let's just say that they gave you like an incentive or something. They're like, we're going to give you, you know, $500. Like you would add that or something here. Okay. Um, but, but in this case, it's all negative. So you, so you have to use your calculator and you get, you get a certain option for that. There's so you get twenty one thousand seven hundred eighty five dollars. Right, so the idea is that this is like what it's really costing you today to do this. Yeah. Because you're actually paying twenty four thousand dollars, but what is it really worth in today's today's dollars? Okay, buying buying it. Okay. So buying it, you are you are paying. $40,000 today, like you have to have $40,000 today. Okay, so you're, you're gone, money's gone, okay? okay? But then they're saying you're gonna sell it in three years for $20,000, but in today's dollars, it's, it's not worth as much because you have to discount the value of your money for being that far out in the future. So yeah, you're paying- And because it's just like a one-time payment, it would be over the like three- that's right. For it, all yeah. Yeah. Uh, so like, like, I mean, I, so I enjoy finance a little bit more than you but the, like the other questions are like, well, how much would you have to get for your vehicle to make it the same as the, you know, the leasing, but in this problem, yeah. they just want you to get the two values and basically decide, well, which one is the better option? Is it better to lease or is it, is it better um, to buy? Okay. Um, so leasing is the better option because you're out less money in terms of net present value. Got it. So like kind of, you're like adjusting the value of yes. like buying. And yeah. You, you're, you're normalizing the two scenarios in two today's dollars. Um, so they, they're saying that this one is, oops. You're saying that this one is is preferred here. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. And and it, it it's based on this discount rate. Like like changing that rate is as we'll see in part B changes everything. Yeah. Okay. If if the discount rate is now two percent, so we're gonna look at two percent now. Um, you know, it changes changes. So so in this case, when you lease, it's it's still the minus eight thousand but it's now one plus 0 0.02 to the power of one minus 8,000, one plus 0 0.02 to the power of two, plus minus 8,000, one plus 0 0.02 to the power of three. So this ends up being um, minus 21, 153.55 and uh, buying it uh, minus 40,000 plus 20,000 over the same calculation here. Cool. So in terms of like your decision really is based, like what this is telling you is that if interest rates go, like in this case, the interest rate went down, but let's say it went from two to five, it changes whether you should put the money out now or later in these problems. It really like, then that's how you, just actually a lot of people decide on whether they're going to take out a loan or not is what they think inflation will do. If they think inflation will go up, um, that means you don't have to pay back as much money in real dollars as you once did. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. All right. Uh, I guess there's part C. Sorry, I'm just looking at this to see what they're actually asking for. Oh, good. Suppose the leasing can be. All right, suppose the leasing company tells you at the end of the third year, they will randomly choose a client to become owner of the, his car. 
what has to be the probability of winning to let you indifferent between buying and and leasing um okay this is a weird problem um why why is that Value of the car is representative value. So they're they're saying they're here's what they're saying. They're saying you you're gonna do the lease. Okay, so that that part and it's mm -hmm. from part part B. They tell you the points point zero two. And one plus point zero two squared plus minus eight thousand one plus. 0 0.02 cubes. So they're saying, okay, you're going to lease it. You're absolutely going to lease it. All right. Yeah. But then they're saying at the end of the third year, um, you, uh, someone's going to become the, the owner of this, of this vehicle. And, and uh, they, we, we believe its value is $20,000. Okay. Over um, one plus 0 0.02 to the power of three. Okay. But what we what we what we don't know is that and they're calling this interest rate or this probably when they're calling this interest rate pi. They're saying you, you're not guaranteed this. They're saying you're just you, you, you know there, there's some probability that this is going to happen. But what you what you don't want it to be is any worse than than what you did in the previous problem to to buy it. Bought it. So that's why you're like adding the rest is basic it's like subtraction yeah i mean this this number right here we already had from a previous problem and mm -hmm. and there's there's some probability here that that I, it's really an odd question but it it's like yeah. th there's some probability of getting this and that should equal out to this minus 21 153.55 which um, is the present value of buying that we found from part b correct? yes Yes, I might have these, I have these backwards here, sorry. That number goes up there, this number goes down here. Yes, um, and that, that's the whole indifferent part there. All right, so let's, uh, let's keep going here. Exercise two, A. Sure, you're not in a finance class. This is nope. This is econ O two hundred. <laughs> All right. Uh, suppose you just graduated from college and are working in a consulting firm. You're making a wage of eighty thousand dollars per year, paid at the end of each year. You have decided to deposit fifty thousand dollars of the wages each year immediately upon earning them at the end of each year in a bank account that compounds quarterly or four times per year with an annual interest rate of six percent. Calculate the amount of money rounded to the nearest penny, which you'll have in your account after four years working at this job. <clears throat> so just, just to be clear here, you, you work an entire year. So I don't know if you, I don't know if you like start your, your, like you work one full year. And so let me do this this way, beginning and at the end of the year, you get $80,000. Yes. And, and, and so you, then invest fifty thousand dollars at the beginning of what we'll call, I guess, year year two, and then uh, uh, how much of after four years of working? So you work for four years, um, but you it, like the way I'm reading this is you only get fifty. You only you're only in, investing fifty thousand dollars three times. Like you get the eighty thousand at the end of year one, fifty, and then you repeat. You I don't, don't know. Don't invest. You you have nothing to invest at the beginning of year one. Yeah. And this is, I mean, this isn't real life, but this is the scenario. So they're they're now saying that fifty thousand dollars is what you have to invest, and that amount is being compounded quarterly at six percent. And then you're adding to it fifty thousand dollars, and that is also being added quarterly, and so on. So there's there's actually a number of ways to do this. Um, this is a again, it's a financial tool or calculation here. Yeah. Um, trying to think of what the 
the, so the standard one is, is the future value of something is the present value one plus R over N to the N times T. This is kind of the basic formula for you. So for, for just that year two money, it's the $50,000 times the one plus 0 0.06 divided by four to the four times one power. Okay, so that gives you that gives you the amount of money you'll have at the end of year year two in your savings. And wait, where did the um, 0 0.06 come from? Oh, interest yeah. rate. Of six yep. percent. Yeah, they have they have to give you that. Okay, so th so this this number I'm kind of not really seeing this in the calculation because they're doing it slightly different, but this number. Um, maybe and maybe we will uh, go to their calculation moment. Whatever this is, you're then adding to it another fifty thousand because that's what you have at the beginning of year three. Yes. Okay. So so whatever this this result is, you're adding to it fifty thousand, and then you're multiplying this whole thing. You're doing this whole calculation again with one plus point zero six to the power of four times four to the power of one. Now they they sort of simplify this for you because they this is I guess this is not a financial class, so they they um they do it this way they say fifty thousand this is for year uh, year one it ends up being comp compounded one plus point zero six divided by four to the um, four times three because you get three years you get three years of that first. 50,000 year, year two, year Got three, it. year four. Oh, and then would you do like 100? No, you, you do them separately. You say, okay, for that second 50,000, oh, you God. only get it for two years, four times two. Oh, okay. And then you add to it one plus 0 0.06 divided by four, but you only get this one for, for one year. And and then you get your uh, your total for that. So again, all, it all goes back to like, are you? When do you think? So don't don't use this. Um, but it all goes back to like, how long are you are you investing the money? You're that fifty thousand dollars you're investing for twelve periods. That second fifty thousand for eight periods or quarters. That last fifty thousand for four quarters. Got it. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Okay. Part B. Now we're doing uh, probability, expected value, also in finance. Okay. In addition to your bank account, you've decided to invest in the stock market as well. Through some research, you found the following information on the rate of return for two stocks and the probabilities of these. Okay. So think of column, uh, the rate as like your X. And you're probably as P of X. Okay. Okay. So the expected rate of return is the expected value of X. The expected value of X is, it's the summation of X times P of X. Okay. So we, we want to add, we want to add a column to this table where we actually multiply the rate times the probability. Now, I, I don't know why your class uses, um, percentages but you you don't work in percentages when you're doing these calculations like don't write 100 over here that's really bad um yeah so if you need to and i mean i guess i might do this i might convert them two percent to decimals just to avoid having something weird happen on the exam but the, yeah. you then need to multiply x times p of x okay so your your expected value is 0 0.05 times 0.2 plus 0.1 times 0.55 plus 0.15 times 0.4. And assume you've, you've seen that before. Yes. Okay, so, and that's for A. You have to do the same thing for B. Now B has negative interest rates, that's fine. I mean, that does happen. It's happened a lot more recently. Let me move this. Uh, I guess I can't. Okay. So your, your expected value of X is minus 0 0.01 times 0 0.25. So 
It's just going, you know, x times p of x each time, 0 0.03 times 0.4 plus 0 0.07 times 0.4 plus 0.2 times 0.15. And you get those two numbers. Now that they've done the calculations for you, A ends up being 0.125 and B ends up being 0 0.0675. So A, A, is, A is greater. Uh, obviously A is a better return. Look. Okay. Uh, part C, after more research, find another opportunity. Let's see if we can do this here. If you find another stock opportunity. This stock pays a $55 dividend at the end of each year. The prevailing interest rate is 8%. And you will sell the stock for $600 after four years. What is the value of the stock uh, to today? Today rounded to nearest penny. So whenever you see today, you want to think present value. That was that kind of discount rate stuff that we were we were talking about here. Um, and so you're, you're gonna, you're gonna, what are you gonna do? You're gonna get $600, but it also gives you a dividend. Okay. So the idea is, is like, we're, we're trying to figure out like, what is this thing actually worth today? Yeah. So you're so your, similar to the, like, um, yes. Question was, one thing. Yes. Or? So for, this is for year one. 1 plus 0 0.08 for year two, 1 plus 0 0.08 for year three, okay, 1 plus 0 0.08 for year four. Then you're going to sell the stock. So you get the dividend and you get the sale of the stock. So that's $600 over 1 plus 0 0.08 to the power of four. And that gives you this present value of about $623.18. Uh, 600 over. Okay. All right. So we do have to stop here, or at least for now. We can obviously pick okay. up here. Um,